Before the video starts, I would like to announce that I will be doing a giveaway where one person can win a copy of Hearts of Iron 4 and another person can win a copy of Thrones of Britannia Total War. This giveaway will be sponsored by Voidu Gaming, where you can find great deals on a wide variety of games, including new releases. More details about the giveaway will be available in future videos. Well, I'm finally here. I'm finally doing it. A much requested video by one certain individual. This one's for you. What the premise of this particular video is, is in the Road to 56 mod, play as Lithuania and do something with them. My own objective that I've created for Lithuania today is to make them grand again because of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. Get it? Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. I can already tell how different this mod is because it's July and Ethiopia isn't already collapsing. In fact, they appear to be somewhat winning their war against Italy. Might just have to get the Prestrodron achievement in this mod is what I'm thinking. My god, I have always loved the Lithuanian leader's goatee. It's just so majestic. Unfortunately, goatee man's gotta go, because I need to become fascist in this game and we're replaced with this idiot. But, the good news is I have now become the Grand Duchy of Lithuania again. And I definitely didn't know that would happen at the start of the game. Wink. What kind of backwards ass world is this where China declares war on Japan? Not even in Waking the Tiger have I seen such absurdity. Oh, look at Latvia guy too in this mod. He's got a cool goatee as well. But just like my old Lithuanian leader, this guy's gotta go. I'm gonna need Latvia's land. And I'm gonna take it right now. It's always a great day when you can just hold all of the enemy troops with one attack and then simply walk around them and take all their cities with one division. Those are my kind of invasions. And Estonian guy just had to ruin the cool Baltic goatee bros, but uh, I will fix for him. The right is ascendant in France, that's strange. I've never actually seen a game where the fascists take over France before Germany invades. Uh what? Bro, what are you talking about, man? You have two choices here, Lithuania. You can either surrender, make it easy, no one gets hurt, or you could fight back and you will all be killed. I do not recommend taking- Oh, holy shit, you're actually taking option two. I don't even know what to do now. I never thought I'd have to do this. Oh, don't worry, Lithuania. We are here to help you. Ich definitely don't want to make you a satellite state later. We just want to help you fight big bad Soviet Union. I'm sorry I had to see that. Anyways, the uh, battle is kind of settled down now that the German reinforcements have arrived. The Soviets are failing to break through, and this could be a stalemate. So the Soviets just keep on attacking and attacking and attacking, not even giving my defenders any bit of rest, but still, it's not going that good for them. If you were ever interested in the fate of the Japanese-Chinese War, well, here's what happened. Japan had a civil war, the Democrats won, China got all of Manchuria, Korea became independent, and Hirohito decided to commit Sudoku. While I may have pushed the Soviets back like one province, uh, the cost has been about an hour of my life that I will definitely not be getting back anytime soon. But wait a minute, there's hope! The Soviets are actually about to demand Eastern Poland, and if the Polish refuse, well, they'll be on our side. And perhaps we can get this war moving once again. The Germans also just keep giving me free expeditionary forces. I say over half my army now is actually German troops, and I am actually okay with that. So it's happened, the Soviet Union has gone to war with Poland. Poland has joined the Axis. France and the United Kingdom and Romania all join into the war. And all of a sudden, this is looking really good for Lithuania. I think you know what's coming next. Wait a minute. What's that music? Is that the Blitzkrieg music I hear? I think it is! So the music is really loud! 
It's hard to hear anything, but what's happening is we're advancing very far into Soviet territory now. Uh, the Soviet line has really thinned out because they're trying to defend along an entire front. And we're surrounding their troops and we're breaking through. And this is all of a sudden going very well for us. Ooh, we need to, we need to take a break. Uh, Blitzkrieg is going quite well, but now that we've cut off the Soviet Union from Estonia, let's, let's take a minute, let's regroup here, and let's just take over Estonia, so that way I can form the unified Baltic state that I need to complete my objective. So that was a pretty simple war. Soviets just weren't able to get any reinforcements to Estonia, and now the Grand Duchy of Lithuania becomes the Baltic Unitary State. Unfortunately for us though, the German slash Romanian slash Polish advance has really slowed down a lot as they've adopted the same strategy the Soviets had where they just keep on attacking and attacking even though their troops have no organization whatsoever and it's just not really working for them. At some point, Spain decided they want to get involved as well, and now France is just having their way with them. The Romanians actually kind of helped break the stalemate a bit. They made a strong push in the south, and that had to thin out the lines up north, so I think we're back on track. Even though we're right outside Moscow, I think it's going to be more important for us to get rid of all these Soviet divisions trapped in this little pocket here. So we're going to make a spirit attack and cut them off. That's a nice bulge right there. Trust me, I will know a good one when I see one. In a last ditch effort to remain relevant, the Soviet Union has annexed Tanu Tuva. And I can only ask, Tanu what? Now Mexico has decided it wants to get involved. I don't know why, first Spain, then Mexico, deciding to just hop into the war in the middle of it when the Soviet Union's losing. Uh, whoever their foreign advisors are really need to, really need to rethink their career choice. Alrighty, after a long, hard-fought war with a lot of dead people, like an excessive amount, we won. It's time to claim my territory. So here's where the world stands now. Poland and Germany just kind of created a big line through the Soviet Union. I got Estonia, though, and also most of eastern Siberia. They kind of left me the, the scraps. But I mean, I'll take it, my territory expanded about like 500 times in size, so it at least looks good on paper. But just like Spain and Mexico, China also joined the war earlier. They didn't do shit, but since I'm still at war with them, now we gotta get all the way over to China to take them out. Another political move, the Siamese have decided to join the Pact of Rome. Italy and Hungary, who also haven't done shit this entire game, Siam's just like, I like these guys. I'm gonna hang out with them for protection, even though they're halfway across the world. All right. Something seems fishy about this pet. I can't quite place my finger on it, but it just does not seem right. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the Chinese are not quite up to the standard that the Soviet troops were, and we're really just blasting right through them. I have the game on speed 5. I'm barely even looking at my screen. I'm actually just watching the World Cup off to the side. And uh, I'm kind of just letting them go. Oh, Germany. Germany, why? Why Why are you doing... Greece? Greece? Oh, God. Oh, man. Now France and Netherlands are helping. Oh, why is Greece even joined the People's Front? Why, wh why not just join the Allies? Oh, God. You know, I'm under no obligation to help you, Germany. I'm just going to continue my war against China, and you're going to have to deal with it on your own. You know, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. This is all your own fault. Ugh, it really isn't going well for you, is it? Man, when all your troops are in China and you randomly declare war, obviously this is what's going to happen. They're going to, like, show up at Berlin in about two minutes. Okay, now it's France's turn, I guess, to act like a complete retard. They have declared war on Siam. And that means Italy now is available to help out and attack France from behind. Really can't understand AI decision making in this mod. It's quite erratic and quite stupid. Like everyone's just gone mental over there. I, I'm just taking a nice stroll to Shanghai 
and all the European countries have just lost their bloody minds. It's like a free-for-all. You see, France? You see? See what happens? When you play stupid games, I told this to Germany, you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes, they just don't listen, do they? And France is now gone, so I guess Germany, this is your chance at survival. I can kind of see they've already halted the advance, and I, okay, they're at war with Finland too. Didn't even realize that. I don't know when that happened. The whole, I guess, Nordic Brotherhood, as they're called, I, I don't know what's happening anymore. You know what, I don't really care anymore. I mean, Germany's safe now, I guess, so... So that means I shouldn't really be in any danger of all of a sudden just losing. And, uh... Yeah, I mean, maybe I'll grab some more score at the end here. I did beat the Chinese! The northern half of China went to me, the southern half, for some reason, went to my vassal, the Chinese Empire, but... That's eh, whatever. You know, I think that's enough road to 56 for me. If I'm being honest, this mod is a bit too crazy, and I really don't feel like finishing that war, because I didn't start it. It's not my problem. But hey, I got a lot of land. I got a lot of China, got a lot of the Soviet Union. I feel like I made Lithuania pretty grand again. And so, with that, well, I think that's a good place to end the video. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I look forward to seeing you for the next one.